This video is going to demonstrate how to create your own checklists uh, within GarageHive. Now this is a relatively complex process, uh, which we do appreciate. Uh, we do plan on simplifying this process, but this is the method for now. In addition to that statement, um, we do offer a checklist building service. So if you send the support team a checklist, uh, we can give you a price for getting that checklist converted into GarageHive. Uh, so to start from uh, any role center you need to use a search function and you need to search for checklist templates this is a starting point now this is really important um, to understand the hierarchy in which um, the checklist templates work in GarageHive so I'm just going to drag a picture into the view so you can see that we have a checklist template and this is like the parent category of this is the, the header um, and this is how the hierarchy works so each checklist template has a set of checklist template item groups and then the groups are made up of checklist items. So I'll just show you how this looks within the system but this is quite important to refer to to understand uh, the structure and then I'll explain why we've created the structure like this. So in, in all of your systems you should have a default set of checklists and it's actually good to just see how they're built um, is a great way to learn how the checklists are actually built as well. So in this particular example, we'll go ahead and just look at the vehicle health check checklist template. Then in the header of this window, you'll see you have linked item groups. What you can see here on the left are the group codes, which we'll go into more detail shortly. And then you can see the sorting number on the right. So this is the order in which the uh, group codes will appear on the checklist. Now the reason we have this stage is because in theory, different checklist templates could share the same template item groups. So you might have elements off your full service and your interim service and your health check. For example, the tire check on all of those checklists could be the same. So we've built the system in a way that you can actually use elements off other previously created checklists on a new checklist. So it takes some time to set up initially, but after the initial setup, you can actually start sort of cutting and slicing the checklist quite quickly and regrouping the template item groups uh, to create a new checklist. So in this particular one, uh, we're gonna look at the uh, pre-VHC group code. So I want to get into the detail, you know, the actual questions that are within this uh, item group. Now to do this, I, I select the line, I select the down list and select from full list. And then from here, I'm going to select items. And this is the actual makeup of that particular um, set of checklist items. Um, so I'll just go through that again just to make sure. So we're in the checklist templates. We want to go into the vehicle health check checklist template. We can see the groups. And then I want to go into the pre VHC lines. So select from full list and then select items. And now I'm in the actual lines. So from here, this is where I can start changing um, text if I want to, etc. cetera. Um, but in this example, uh, what I suggest you do, if you, if you are keen to learn how to do this yourself, um, I suggest you just get in here, you play with um, what you can see here, um, try and establish how it, how it all works. Um, but what I'm actually gonna do now is just create a new checklist uh, from scratch and actually just show you some of the functions. What I advise that you do is actually export what you already have because if you do actually end up breaking something, you can very simply just re-import it back in. You can export as a group. So if I select all of them, for example, I can simply select export and then it's going to give me a backup and that backup is now nice and safe. So if I do break something, I can always just re-import what I've just exported. Okay, so we're going to create a new checklist template and we'll just call this one demo checklist and we need to decide whether it's a vehicle inspection or a quality control in this case we're going to select vehicle inspection we then have some options here so we can have technician signature prompt approve a signature prompt faults and actions if there's a video on faults and actions if you want to learn about it i suggest you watch that video it goes into detail about faults and actions and then the printout type can either be standard or two column so the standard printout will show you the um, the 
color or the uh, control to the left and the description of what the technicians found to the right. The two column layout will just show you the color um, or the control. It's not going to actually show the text description. So in this case, we're going to stick to standard. Most will be standard. Uh, we're not going to ask for any prompts or fault, faults and actions. So what I've created now, I have a checklist template, but we've not linked any groups to this checklist template. So I'm going to go to linked item groups and you can see we have none here. So I'm actually going to make a new one and we'll just call this one demo one. So the description of this will just be demo one. Press OK. So now I have my first group and you can see the sorting is zero. So this is the first group within the checklist template. What I need to do now though is actually add some items to this one. So I select items and you can see in the action bar, you've got new line from templates. So we've actually created some templates for you. Uh, so in this one, we're going to use uh, the first question is going to be radio buttons. And we'll just say uh, question one demo. And you can see it's going to be blue, green, amber and red. And then we'll add another question. Question two demo. And then in the next one, we're going to add a uh, checkbox. So we can see demo checkbox. And then what I want to do actually is um, we'll just add one more up here. So we'll say text box. So demo text box. Okay, so this is uh, very quickly starting to build up a checklist and you can see if we just go through some of these options on the right hand side then um, we've got control assist. This is what gives your staff access to the checklist text templates. So if they want to pre-select from certain text templates you've created, um, this is where you dictate that that line can select from those text templates. So for example, this can only work on uh, control types that are text. So we'll select that we do want them to be able to select from text templates. And then here, this is where you can set a filter. So um, in this uh, demo environment, we don't have an awful lot here, so I'll just leave that blank. But let's say I only wanted them to uh, be able to access um, any of the text templates to do with lock and wheel nuts. You see the code on the left here where it says lock. Well, if I put lock, with a, st uh, with a star next to it. That's going to allow the technician on this line to select from all of the text templates that begin with the word lock. And you'll see that in action when we actually apply this to a, a, a checklist. Okay, so um, this column here will dictate, it will warn the user uh, warn the service advisor that if any if there are any if there's any text input or action on this line then it's going to mark that checklist as requiring attention this is particularly useful um, for items for example if you want red and amber to be considered um, something that requires attention then I suggest that for red and amber you still, you tick this box here and again red and amber and we can see if there's any text in here or if this checkbox is ticked then we will also want to know about it so the input caption, uh, for example, when a technician um, is filling in a checklist, you can actually create captions for the technician to read. So we could, in this caption, we could put, you must always input text here. So the technician will see this instruction when they're filling out the checklist. And then you can decide if you want to print it. So in this particular case, I don't want to print. So I'm going to untick this one. We'll add a new uh, text box and we'll say demo text to box and say this is for the customer. And what we'll actually do in this one is we won't show it to the tech, but we will print it for the customer. So the customer will see this text on the checklist template. Okay, so that is our first uh, checklist item group. And you can see that now if I go back to the checklist template, you can see it has one item group applied to it. Now what we're actually going to do is utilize some of the existing item groups. Um, so for example, we're going to add tires and wheels. 
And is there anything else I could use here? We'll just do a wheel torque check as well. So you can see that the reason we've created this structure is because in this particular checklist, I want to actually include the tire check and the wheel torque check. And I don't now need to remake them. I can just use the existing assets that we already created. So what I need to do now is uh, preview this checklist that I've just created. So I'm gonna go back to the home screen, go to checklists, create a new checklist. We don't need to link it to a job sheet. And we're gonna select from uh, the demo checklist. So you can see this is what the checklist would look like to the technician. So you see I've got my uh, red, amber and green. I have my demo checkbox, which I can tick and not tick. You can see the instruction to the technician. You must always input text here. And you can see that they have this control assist button where they can select from the locking wheel nuts text templates. Again, there is a video on text templates that I suggest that you watch if you want to go into a bit more detail. And then you can see uh, in this box here, I'll put example text. Uh, in this box here, the technician didn't have an instruction, but it should print out to the customer. Uh, and then we'll just go through the rest of these, just fill it in, etc. Now, just because it looks okay here, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to print okay. So this is one other complication. There are various combinations um, of templates that you can use that will print, some won't print. So I suggest that when you create one, you always print. So we'll just preview this checklist. And you can see here that the demo text box doesn't have the caption, but the demo text box two does have the caption. So that goes back down to the checklist on those columns that I spoke to you about. Uh, and you can see here the various uh, colors, etc. So that is very briefly how you create a checklist template. As I said, export your work, keep it safe, have a look at how the existing ones are built. Um, if it all feels a bit too much for you, then contact support and we can build them for you um, at a price and it is a competitive price. Um, but if you have any questions, then again, please feel free to message support and we'll do our best to answer any questions for you. Um, for those that weren't aware, um, because of this checklist template import and export feature, you can share these fee uh, your checklist creations with um, other members of the community. There are lots that have been shared. There are lots that are already that have already been made. Um, so feel free to post in the forum. Perhaps somebody's already created the checklist um, which you're about to create. Um, so again, just take advantage of these features here. So I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, then please let me know. Thank you.